the new ChatGPT 4.0 models that are available on the hosted Invoke product. They have three quality levels, low, medium, and high. Low is cheap and quick. It gets an image out to you really fast. It doesn't cost as much, but the quality is obviously low, as uh, you would imagine from the name. The medium and the high, we're going to kind of walk through how they differ in quality because there is a difference. The high is obviously much more expensive than the medium quality, but we'll kind of talk through where you might want to use that and where you might not want to use that. We'll go through some different ways that we can use the model. The first thing that I'm going to do is I've got a couple of examples. The first is a cat. And so the prompt for this is just a cat. It's a cat. It's a basic prompt that doesn't have a lot of fluff to it. It's not asking for anything specific. It's just asking for a cat. Cats are one of the best examples for uh, image generation models because they are very common and there's a lot of pictures of cats and you're typically going to get a good image out of the prompt, a cat. And so I've got that as an example here. Even with the low quality setting, we get a pretty decent cat. The medium quality setting brings up the level of uh, detail and the fidelity on some of the fur uh, elements. And if we go all the way up to high, we can see that there's this nice kind of like aesthetic effect that is being applied as well uh, to this image. If I were to look at these, I would probably not go for the high as my regular kind of generation, primarily because uh, it does cost more. And so it, it, it really kind of depends on what you're going for and what you need. If you're doing text, for example, the low quality model just won't do text that well at all. And the high quality model will almost nail every single word. And so there's, there's kind of like a dependency on what you need and uh, the context that you're using it and which one you would use. Now, the next one that I uh, have here is much more uh, style driven. It has a longer prompt. It's very much focused on kind of like a video game aesthetic. And what you'll see is that the low quality generation here conceptually has a lot of the kind of visual elements um, that I prompted for, but it's really blurry and it's hard to tell what's going on and there's not a lot of detail. If we go up to the next uh, level of quality, we can see that um, there's definitely some more uh, coherence to this. It's kind of pulled some stuff together uh, and it looks a little bit more like something. But when we go all the way up to high, we can see that there's just a precision to detail. Uh, every piece of armor has kind of like a crisp edge. The fingers are well formed. There's a pose. The high quality on this uh, specific generation really just nailed it. Whereas the other ones were a little bit loose and a little bit fuzzy. And again, these are all the same prompt. Now, the beauty of the medium model is that it might provide a really good base for us to work from using SDXL. And so even if it's not the perfect final image, it can often give us a much better place to start. And so we'll go ahead and maybe take this base image here and work from it so that we kind of have a place to, to begin from. And we're going to go back and use one of the older generation models. In this case, I probably will use the custom XL model. And I'll come in and I'll just do some quick edits and we'll do some transformations.
So we can see that even though the base was imperfect, it gave us something that we could mold and shape using some of the other models that we've got available to us. I'll just bring that kind of base image back up so we can do the before and after. And you can see we brought a lot of depth out by using the, uh, the model and kind of were able to add a lot of texture and add some details that were maybe missing from the original medium generation. But this gives us a lot of really cool things to work from. So what I'm going to cover next is one of the cool tricks that you can use the ChatGPT model for. What you'll see here is I've kind of just layered in and composited a scene. I've got some like new shoes that I've generated. I've got some jeans and I've got a jacket and then I've got some arrows pointing to where I want those. And really what I can do is just tell it kind of what I want it to do with those images. So I'm going to say show this man with the jacket and jeans. Uh, zoom out so we can see the shoes. Uh, the man is posing in an editorial photograph and we can see all of these clothes clearly. Something like that. So now we've got this guy wearing these clothes and they probably needs a little bit of editing, but if we take a look at the before and after, we can see that it did take inspiration from the shoes. It took inspiration from the pants. Uh, maybe the color's a little bit more jeans-like, and we probably would want to tweak that a little bit, but the jacket also has uh, a lot of the same features and elements. So we didn't have to tell it about the jacket or the pants or the shoes. We just showed it and we kind of jo uh, drew lines where we wanted things and it kind of had it complete the image for us. Um, so this is one of the really cool features of uh, the model as well. And again, we can take this as a base, we can use this and retexture it using other models, and it becomes a really powerful tool in that way. The last thing I'll talk about today for the ChatGPT model is just the ability to use a reference image. So we can use the reference image that's on the canvas, but we can also supply that just by adding a reference image layer. And that'll show up in your reference images list. You can use it uh, the same way that you'd use a reference image and other models. And we can call it out when we're generating an image. So for this one, we'll say, uh, let's just do it in a different style. Um, create an image inspired by the uh, referenced image, the style of the generated image should be in a deep impasto interly style add some i don't know some bird-like creatures to the scene let's see what we get so we can see that it took inspiration from the image it kind of has the lightning things it's got that sun in the background and it's added some bird-like creatures which are flying around in the scene. In this way, we're able to do a pretty decent job of taking reference images and pushing them into other styles, of combining them together, of really referencing them in a direct way in the prompt rather than trying to think of it as kind of putting a bunch of ingredients in the pot and stirring it, which is really what it feels like when you're using other model architectures like SDXL, where you're not really instructing the model to do certain things. You're more so adding to the mix of what it is considering while it's generating the image. And it's a little bit more chaotic and you're working with the tool based on its limitations rather than talking to the tool. And I think that's one of the biggest things that you'll note with ChatGPT is you can give it uh, very verbal instructions and kind of talk to it the same way that you would talk to an assistant who's trying to interpret what you mean. Uh, so hopefully this has been a helpful way of getting started with the ChatGPT model. I'm really excited to see what you create.